And now to our keynote speaker. Emily Boyd is a teaching professor and the director of undergraduate studies for the Department of Mechanical Engineering and Materials Science at Washington University in St. Louis. Since joining WashU in 2015, Dr. Boyd has dedicated herself to supporting students and improving the, wo the work environment for non-tenure track or professional track faculty. She's the director of the WashU Summer Engineering Fellowship and an undergraduate research pro and runs an undergraduate research program for underrepresented minorities. She co-leads the Women in en and Engineering program and in 2017 founded the Women and Engineering Leadership Society for undergraduate students and alumni. Dr. Boyd oversees a student alumni mentoring program, Mentor Collective. As co-president of WashU's Association for Teaching, Research, and Practice Faculty, Dr. Boyd has led policy and cultural improvements for professional track faculty at the school and university levels. She serves as faculty advisor to WashU's ASME and SWE student chapters. She's a member of ASEE and, and has been an active ASME volunteer for over a decade. Dr. Boyd's technical area of expertise is in thermal fluid sciences, which she enjoys teaching to undergraduate and graduate students using team-based learning. She is a recipient of the 2018 Emerson Award for Excellence in Teaching. Dr. Boyd received her PhD in mechanical engineering from the University of Texas, Austin in 2014, where she researched film cooling technology to improve the efficiency of gas turbine engines. She received her bachelor's and master's in mechanical engineering from the University of Missouri, Columbia in 2006 and 2008, respectively. Please join me in wel welcoming her to the stage. Thank you for the introduction, Stephanie, and good morning. Today, I'm speaking about non-tenure track faculty, or what ASCE prefers to call professional track faculty, because we should be defined by what we are, not by what we are not. Throughout my talk today, I'm going to continue to use this term, professional track faculty. I'm here because professional track faculty are a growing portion of the professoriate who often experience less than ideal workplace cultures and policies that prevent them from thriving in their jobs. It's my privilege to speak to you today as someone who has helped lead change at Washington University in St. Louis by forming a collective voice for professional track faculty. This has transformed the James McKelvey School of Engineering from an average place for professional track faculty to work to one of the best. Changes are needed because the number of faculty on the professional track have increased over the last 40 years. This figure shows the trends in academic labor force from 1975 to 2015, focusing on faculty. You can see the percentage of tenure, tenure track faculty in the blue, part-time professional track faculty in red, and full-time professional track faculty in the pink. And clearly, as you can see, the percentage of faculty on the tenure, tenure track has been decreasing. Now, you might look at this figure and say, oh no, we're hiring fewer tenure, tenure track faculty today than we were in 1975. That's not actually the case. It's just the growth in the number of professional track faculty has outpaced the growth of tenure, tenure track faculty. If we look at the numbers as they stand today, there are two things that I would like you to remember. One, that professional track faculty make up more than one third of full-time faculty positions in the US. And two, part-time professional track faculty make up almost half of faculty positions. These numbers are staggering. A fundam fundamental mission of a university is to educate students. And what these numbers are showing us is that professional track faculty are doing much, if not even possibly the majority of it. However, our academic structure and policies haven't kept up with a changing higher education model that is increasingly relying on professional track faculty to teach students. Professional track faculty are often treated as second class as opposed to equal partners in educating students. And this makes it difficult for them to fully love and thrive in their jobs. Our work is sometimes considered less important or maybe easier 
and it's presumed that we weren't good enough to get a tenure track position or that we're just of lower quality. And therefore, professional track faculty are not compensated as well. Full-time professional track faculty earn 26% less and part-time professional track faculty earn 64% less per hour than tenure, tenure track faculty. We often lack funding for resources, such as for professional development, paid leave, benefits, insurance, and much more often aren't commensurate with what tenure, tenure track faculty receive. We often lack representation on faculty governance bodies on the departmental, school, and university level. This is a problem because it affects our attitudes towards our jobs and our employers. And professional track faculty can't give 100% to their jobs if they're not fully integrated and informed. People pursue professional track faculty positions for a variety of reasons. It could be the classic two-body problem where someone is trying to find a position in the same city as his or her spouse and they need to be a little bit more flexible with the jobs they take. It could be the desire to not go through the the tenure process and having to earn that and they want to lead a more balanced life. Or maybe it's because, because the person just really likes teaching and wants to spend more of his or her time interacting with students. Over the years, I've had a very similar conversation over and over. Sometimes it's with someone that I haven't seen in a while. Sometimes it's with someone I'm meeting for the first time. The conversation gravitates towards my career. I explain that I teach at Washington University in St. Louis. The person says, oh, well, what are you researching? And then I explain that I'm in, in a teaching position and I don't do as much research anymore. And then the person is trying to be helpful, but they basically tell me that I need to quit my job, get out of my career, and into a tenure track faculty position as soon as possible before I ruin my career. Sometimes a person tells me that the university is wronging me because I'm tenure track quality and I deserve to be on the tenure track. As you can imagine, this is a frustrating conversation to have because I take what I do very seriously and I think I do important work. And when people are saying these things to me, it's inherently saying that either they don't value what I do or at least the academia in general doesn't value what I do. So now I'm about to tell a little bit more about my personal story to provide an example of what it's like to be on the professional track. If you're in the audience thinking, oh, the, you know, the professional track faculty at my school do not experience this. I'm here to tell you that especially if you work at a research university, they probably do. Um, unfortunately, my experiences are in no way unique. Admittedly, when I first started as a principal lecturer at Washington University in St. Louis, which is a highly selective private university, I was hesitant to take a job off the tenure track. I pursued a PhD at the University of Texas Austin in mechanical engineering because I wanted to go into industry. I thought that one day I was gonna work for this cool company, work my way up the, you know, the corporate ranks, and maybe one day uh, manage an R&D division. That's where I wanted to go, that's where I thought I was going. Um, but I met and married my husband, who had strong roots in St. Louis, and when I started looking at jobs there, there were fewer given my qualifications than I'd hoped. So I expanded my job search to include academic positions. Uh, my research didn't really fit with the research thrusts at Washington University, but they did offer me a full-time teaching position. I viewed taking the position as a huge risk. I was concerned that the tenure, tenure track faculty wouldn't acknowledge me, that they wouldn't appreciate what I was doing, and that I would be prevented from contributing in any other way outside of the classroom. Because I really wanted the ability to advise student organizations and I wanted to be able to serve on committees that would help make the university a better place. I took the position thinking that a year from then I could be in a different career. I started the job at WashU and thankfully my colleagues did treat me with respect. And I generally liked most of the people I was working with, which speaks volumes. And while WashU is an exceptionally wonderful place, there were a series of archaic policies and cultural norms that prevented me from feeling comfortable with my career choice. When I started, I didn't receive an orientation. I didn't even have a conversation with HR. So everything that I learned about my benefits was from a search on your university website. And now I'm going to admit something really embarrassing. I was two years into my position before I realized where my title fit within the teaching faculty ranks. 
I started as a principal lecturer and I thought that the senior lecturer title was above mine and two years into my job I found out that it was the reverse and that I had been at the highest level of teaching rank that existed at the time. Now the teaching faculty ranks were listed in a brief policy but I didn't know the policy existed and it wasn't in a place where I ever could have found it. Um, I wasn't invited to faculty meetings so I didn't know what was going on in my department. I wasn't allowed to participate in the school or university faculty senates, so I didn't know what was going on there either. And then there were a few small things. So for instance, in our departmental website, there was a web page for faculty, meaning tenure, tenure track faculty. And then there was a separate web page for other faculty. And I was on the other faculty web page. About two years into my position, I decided to have a second child. As a professional track faculty member, I did not have access to paid parental leave. Yet, I was in this weird place because I was also considered a faculty member, so I didn't have vacation time. So I timed my pregnancy so that the baby would arrive over the summer so that I wouldn't lose any of my salary. And I would guess I'm probably not the only person in this room who has done that. When you're working at a place that's continuously telling you that you're on the B team in one way or another, it's really hard for you to feel good about your job. And for the first couple of years, I really had this feeling that I had settled in my career, which was an awful feeling to have considering I spent eight years in graduate school. So I recognized that our school and university had all these problems, and I was fortunate that our leadership did as well. In 2017, we accomplished something critical to making the university a better place for professional track faculty. We formed a collective voice. We united professional track faculty on the school and university levels to advocate for change. That year, our school went through a strategic planning process. I was one of two professional track faculty members asked to join the strategic planning committee, and I was specifically asked to chair a subcommittee to address the culture for professional track faculty in our school. This gave us a collective voice on the school level. As part of our work, we did a little fact-finding, and we found out that 26% of our full-time faculty were on the professional track. This is slightly less than the one-third national average that I mentioned before. And we calculated that the full-time professional track faculty were teaching 48% of the student hours, where the student hours are the number of course credits multiplied the numbers by the number of students in the course. This is a strong value proposition because if we weren't there, who would teach all those classes? Next, we hosted a town hall where we invited all the professional track faculty members in the school to kind of voice their issues and concerns because I knew what my issues were, but I didn't know what the issues were for other professional track faculty members, especially the, the people in other departments. So we used this town hall to figure out what issues we had in common and also which ones are different because if you ever do this, you'll find out that issues vary from department to department because departments have their own specific cultures. And we put all of our issues into a white paper and then we listed a set of recommendations for how to address those issues. If you'd like to see the white paper, it's on our school's website and I'll show a URL at the end. At the same time, we're finalizing this white paper a union was on our campus trying to unionize the full-time professional track faculty members. Two years prior, our part-time professional track faculty had been unionized. The, so the threat of the full-time professional track faculty unionizing as well was pretty real. To address some of the professional track faculty issues without unionizing, we formed the Association of Teaching, Research, and Practice Faculty, which we lovingly gave the name ATRAP. So, <laughs> is this a coincidence? Maybe not. This gave us a collective voice on the university level. At this time, we had a perfect storm for making important policy changes. We had support of administration on all levels. We had the fact that our school was going through a strategic planning process, looking to make changes anyway. There was a union trying to unionize us and we had the school-wide advocacy through ATRAP. And combining all of these things produced results. So over the next couple of slides, I'm going to show you the changes that our school and university have made over the last two years. 
On this slide, I'm going to talk about the changes we made on the departmental and school level. I'm going to talk about the policy as it was before and then the policy that we have now. And some of these aren't policies per se, but they're um, cultural issues. But before, some people were invited to faculty meetings, but not all. And we certainly were not allowed to participate in the school or university faculty senates. Right now, all of us go to faculty meetings, and it, we're talking about full-time professional track faculty. And uh, we have voting rights on the school and university faculty senates. Before, some of us had annual performance reviews, but many of us didn't, and the process was very inconsistent department to department. Now we have a consistent process for annual performance reviews for all full-time professional track faculty. Before, we were not allowed to do any domain research. This stems from a historical context where we, our, uh, our school was sued several decades ago because essentially professional track faculty were doing teaching and research the same job as a tenure track faculty member. And so ever since that lawsuit, our professional track faculty roles were very unbundled. You were either, either teaching or you were research, but you're not, you weren't both. And of course, as engineers, this kind of rubbed a lot of us the wrong way. Now we're allowed to do domain research if it's assigned as a portion of our effort. So for instance, you could be 80% teaching, 20% research. Before, when we had openings for full-time professional track faculties, faculty positions, we wouldn't always do nationwide searches. A lot of times we would just rely on luck. I mean, that's kind of how I got there. Now we do nationwide searches to make sure that we're getting the best people. Before I mentioned that we had that inconsistent listing of faculty on our web pages. Now all, the, all of the faculty are listed on the same web page for each department, and it doesn't even designate who's on which track. And I mentioned that there was that vague policy I couldn't find that explained the teaching faculty ranks. And in that policy, there were no promotion procedures. It was, it was very vague. And now we do have a policy that defines the ranks and the responsibilities for each of those ranks and also promotion procedures. Now I'm going to go over some changes that were made on the university level. So this was in a large part due to the contribution of ATRAP. Before I mentioned we didn't have paid parental leave. Now we have a whole semester which is commensurate with what tenure, tenure track faculty receive. In fact, it's just one in the same policy. All full-time faculty get a semester of paid parental leave. Before, professional development was paid by departments only and it was very ad hoc. It depended on what department you're in by what you would receive. Now we have the Provost Professional Development Fund which provides $1,000 to each professional track faculty member annually. And this is supposed to be on top of what your department would already be paying for, not replacing it. Before, the highest rank was a senior lecture at the university level and principal lecture at the school level. Now we have the addition of the teaching professor title to make it the position a little bit more prestigious. And this didn't really apply to engineering, but it was such a big deal on our campus, I wanted to mention it here. The School of Arts and Sciences had a minimum salary of $40,000 for an academic year and we were able to raise that to $50,000. And that was a pretty big deal for a lot of the professional track faculty who are teaching in the humanities and the social sciences. Uh, before, we had no collective voice to communicate with the administration to even tell them what we wanted. And now, ATRAP leadership meets with our provost once a semester. So this is a lot of change for a university to take on in two years. If you're on the professional track yourself and you want the university to make changes, listen closely. You must form a collective voice. You must unite professional track faculty at the school and university levels to advocate for change. It's important because you need to identify the issues that you have in common. A university policy is probably not going to change for one person, but if there's a group of you who get together and you all want the same thing, uh, change is possible. So next I'm going to go over some things that you should expect or ask for. You should expect representation on all university and school committees that do not relate to tenure. 
as these committees are formed on your campus, they're probably creating new policies or maybe revising old ones. If professional track faculty are not represented on those committees, you're gonna be left out of the conversation. And if those people are not asking professional track faculty to join those committees, um, you have to ask to be on them. All policies and benefits should be commensurate with what tenure, tenure track faculty receive. You should expect attendance and representation at faculty meetings and faculty governance bodies. So this again is important so that you know what's going on, that you can contribute, and often they're discussing things that are important to your job, like curriculum. Funding for professional development. You should expect a private office space where you can meet with students, a work computer that's less than five years old, and access to teaching resources. <laughs> Funny, huh? <laughs> And access to teaching resources. So this is full access to your teaching center as well as using teaching assistance. If you've been at your job a while, you should expect a multi-year job contract for more job security. And if you're not receiving at least a 2% annual raise, you're probably experiencing wage compression where the growth in your salary is not keeping up with the cost of inflation. And that's a real issue. New professional track faculty should have access to orientation and mentorship. And the last one is that you should ask for annual performance reviews. Now, this may seem like something that you really don't want, but I'm here to tell you that if it's done right, it can be used in your advantage, to your advantage in a few ways. One, it facilitates communication with your boss because then he or she will actually know what you're doing. Two, it can promote a conversation about goal setting and the resources you need to do your job better. And three, it can provide documentation for when it's time to go up for promotion. So I love my job and where I work, especially after all these policy changes. It showed me that the university does value what I do and they care about the education we provide to students and that they want, that they want to do the right thing. I've been helping lead ATRAP for the past two years, and I currently serve as its co-president. There are a few things that we're still working on, so we're still working at, on creating an orientation specifically for professional track faculty, and we're working on policies as they relate to phase retirement and then a paid professional development leave, which would be like a sabbatical, and we're working with administration to make those things happen. So I urge all of the professional track faculty in the audience to form your collective voice. For those of you who are tenured on the tenure track or administrators, we need your voice too. We need you to support professional track faculty and advocate for change because professional track faculty are fulfilling a major mission of a university and that's to teach and to mentor students. With that, I would love to take some, oh, there's one more slide, a thank you slide. I wanna thank all the people on this slide here. Um, they had an instrumental role in helping create these policy changes. I obviously did not do this alone, so I'd like to thank them. And if you would like to access our school's white paper, a shortened URL is shown on this slide. And with that, I would love to take some questions. So if you'd like to ask a question, please come up to a mic. Yes. I'm David Zietlow with Bradley University. I think you're not thinking big enough. Um, there should be a revision of the policies for tenure so that someone who's on a professional track can actually attain tenure. Um, so I think we need a revolution in the tenure process. Mm -hmm. I'm a tenured full professor, but I sacrificed my teaching early in my career to get the publications. And uh, I think if we really value teaching, we should change the tenure policies. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. You know, there have been studies that have 
basically surveyed administrators, deans, faculty at several institutions. And the problem with that is they found out that there is no commonality, that the opinions on this are so divergent that ideally, yes, but I, uh, realistically, getting all those people in a room to agree is gonna be very challenging. I certainly think that there is no real difference left now between the non-tenured and tenured track, in my mind, the way you are proposing. And uh, I also want to make sure that uh, tenured faculty is not considered non-professional faculty. Uh, it's not considered, oh, oh, right. You know, we were discussing this earlier that there's not really a perfect term for professional track faculty. Um, it's always a challenge. Um, but, but you're right, um, increasingly professional track faculty are fulfilling some of the same roles as tenure track faculty. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Yes, uh, my name is Tom Roberts, I'm retired from Kansas State University. I have a question, you referred to you got your PhD but you did not mention the professional engineer license, which also designates professionalism. And I think a lot of professors are licensed, but don't necessarily have PhDs. Might you comment on that, please? So that goes back to our selection of the term professional track faculty. Of the Sorry, I guess I didn't fully understand that. I'm not personally a licensed professional engineer. I, I missed your question, I'm sorry. I, I guess, could you restate the question? A licensed professional engineer is qualified in, to practice the profession of engineering, mm -hmm. and that's different than a PhD, but some would say it has the same qualification, particularly when it comes to being a professor of professional practice at a university. And I wondered if your group had considered the PhD versus the professional engineer or the PE as a part of your inclusion in this professional track. No, we had not considered that. Any other questions? Hello. I want to speak up for the professional tracks. Uh -huh. uh, I'm uh, at Purdue University. I had my PE first and got my PhD later, and uh, now teaching professional track. And the big question, we got a lot of those things that you have you know, already, but the big issue was promotions. So to get promotion as professional track, you essentially have to do the same things that the tenure track people have to do. But uh, so that's the, the big issue I, I see. But one thing I want to comment on was at one point my uh, supervisor asked me if I wanted to convert to t tenure track. And I said, why in the world would I want to do that? <laughs> it's the most bizarre system I've ever seen in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah, so that's an interesting point. In our promotion guidelines, um, as I mentioned, we have kind of more of an unbundling, unbundling of what our professional track faculty do. Either you're more focused on research or you're more focused on teaching. And so the teaching criteria, um, the promotion uh, criteria for that position is more heavily rely on probably service um, and uh, basically con contributions to the school, your professional society affiliations, not really research. So they do take into account engineering education research, but not domain research. So that's something that we have done differently, I guess. Hi, my name is Dr. Christine Grant. I'm Associate Dean of Faculty Advancement. Over here, uh, to your left. <laughs> oh, Over here to the thank left. you. Um, and I just wanted to, uh, I appreciate all the comments, and I just wanted to say I think you all have done a fantastic job with this. Um, we have um, assistant associate and full teaching faculty at NC State. We have the track, and they go through the same process. In terms of the RPT, 
They get vetted by their department and the college and the university committee to, in order to be promoted. So we're going to be talking about that Wednesday morning. But um, just I just wanted to say, say thank you very much for mm -hmm. bringing this information to us. And I hope that more universities will take the model that you're using and try to adapt it within the context of what's going on on their campus with regards to the provost office, because that's instrumental in terms of policy. But I hope that you'll be able to package it and more universities will be able to learn from what you've done. So right. thank you. So speaking of which, we, Janie, Brynn, and I are leading a workshop on this topic if you'd like to hear more. It's right after the plenary in the back of the exhibit hall. It's by the food buffet, so you can't miss us. So if you'd like to hear more, we'll be there. And I think that's all the time we have, is that right? All right, thank you.